Hello everyone, this is Count Riolo bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. And today is going to be the two part, or this, this, this second part of our Space Abilities um, um, series on, on YouTube. And today I'll be talking about engineering abilities. So let's go ahead and get started into all those abilities. Um, our first couple of ones that we're going to be talking about is the emergency power to subsystem abilities. Unfortunately, unlike the one from last week, we actually have to talk about these separately simply because the buffs that they each give are all dis very distinct um, instead of extremely similar to the ones from last week. Of all the four of them, Marines Power to Auxiliary is the only one I can't really justify personally using. I mean, it does have a nice thing of being able to immediately dis um, repair disabled auxiliary systems, but the buffs that you get from this thing are fairly low versus what a lot of other like science buffing abilities can actually do for EPG and what other abilities can be able to do to like debuff enemies to allow you to do, deal even, even more DPS for the equivalent um, bridge officer slot. Um, for those of you that maybe know more about si science DPS, maybe can help clarify in the comments as to why this, this ability might be particularly used. But this is the only one I can't really justify using inside of any build whatsoever. However, conversely with that, Marine's Power to Weapons, I, I can see using in basically any DPS build inside the game that has energy weapons in it. So basically, it's just your torpedo builds <laughs> that you're not going to have Marine's Power to Weapons on it. So if you're doing a strictly torpedo build, or, 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 or like a science torpedo tank, um, those are the only situations where you shouldn't use emergency part of weapons. It's also extremely synergistic with a starship tray from the C store called emergency weapon cycle, which is extremely powerful combined with emergency part of weapons. It doesn't matter what level of emergency part of weapons they're using. Um, you can use one, two, or three. It just gives you a little bit of extra bonus energy weapon damage and weapon power depending upon what level rank that you're using it at. Um, that's just kind of what it comes down to. Um, so yeah, um, if you're a DPS captain with energy weapons, or a tank captain with energy weapons, you should be using emergency power to weapons. However, whether you use emergency power to engines or emergency power to shields, comes down to what your playstyle actually is. So basically, you're the general's playstyle in the game with the meta, with competitive engines, um, a duty officer which significantly reduces um, evasive maneuvers when you use emergency power to engines, and vice versa. Um, a lot of your DPS captains prefer emergency power to weapons and emergency power to engines. Um, that's what that's what the meta typically is right now. But if you do it that way, you don't really have a lot of defensive options outside of you know getting away from the enemy or blowing them up before they can actually hurt you. Um, as as a tank captain, I recommend emergency power to weapons with emergency power to shields. Um, if um, if you're really going for an energy damage, I'm tanking captain or if you're a science tank and, and you don't have a really expensive trade off of the off of the exchange from a specific um, tier six starship um, especially if you use a starship trade called shield overload which it which actually makes most part of shields extremely powerful um it gives you a ton of extra survivability combined with that most part of shields by itself already has a very high amount of shield resistance that it gives you that's really the main reason why to use emergency power shields at all is because it gives you a very substantial amount of shield resistance on, on your starship. Keep in mind, it is a non-linear regressive curve on shield resistance. It's, it's mainly shield hardness. That's why you should be wanting to stack as much as possible on under starship, but there's not really a ton of sources of shield hardness. So um, this one is, is a really nice amount of shield resistance extra that you can also, also get. But depending upon how much shield resistance you already have built into your starship and your and your power levels already, you wouldn't necessarily always need to have emergency power shields two or three on your starship. You could just do emergency power shields one, depending upon what things you have on on, on your starship, etc. Um, but that's just me personally. Um, it's um it's eighty it's eighteen percent shield resistance for rank one, twenty four percent for rank two, and thirty percent for rank three. And um, the other thing, thing to keep in mind that I didn't mention already. Um, for all, all these abilities, their buff lasts for 30 seconds, and it's just a, and it's technically 45 seconds before you can use this ability again, but if you have a second emergency power ability, whether it's the same one or a different one, you can use that one after 15 seconds. So, 
if you have two different emergency power to subsystem abilities, you can basically have the buffs of, of two of them going on at, at the same time almost constantly because you can use them use a different one every, every 15 seconds and they last for 30 seconds. So um, just something to keep in mind, having two emergency power to subsystem abilities is actually pretty nice to have on, on, on your starship. Um, our next ability is endothermic in, in, inhibitor beam. This is actually one that you all can get right now um, from, from the holiday vendor, vendor um, off of Q's Winter Wonderland. Um, I haven't been able to test this to really see what the minimum cooldown actually is, but I do know that, that its base cooldown is 60 seconds and that it lasts 20 seconds. Um, so I can tell you that. Um, the nice thing about this thing is that it's it, um, it scales with, with EPG for, for DPS, as well as it does give you a shield resistance debuff on enemies. Alongside EPG builds, this is also synergistic with a lot of your support builds as well, because you can hamper the shield resistance of, of an enemy, and then your, your ally, that they, they you're basically buffing a whole bunch to allow them to do a lot of DPS, can also just burst down that, that, that really annoying target um, a lot easier. Um, it scales from 20 to 30% shield resistance debuff on, on the enemy, depending upon what rank that you have for it. And also the radiation goes up a decent amount as well between the ranks too. But it's mainly the, the shield resistance is, is why you would pick this particular um, thing. All right, so our next one is engineering team. This is one of the two abilities that I would say is basically a must have default to have for basically your starships in general. It's a very substantial um, whole heal. Um, you're able to use it every 30 seconds. It's really nice. Um, even with just rank one, pretty good sizable heal, put it on your starship. Depending upon your faction though, the symbol for it is gonna be different. I personally like the Klingon faction's version of engineering team the best. It shows a, a D7 or D9 battlecruiser on there. You guys can probably tell in the, in the com comments which silhouette this is supposed to be of, but anyway, this is a really nice, um, this is a really, really nice, nice ability. We, we will get into a different ability later as to why not all tank builds in the game on the S2O Reddit page use engineering team because they like something else better, but we will get to that. Um, our next ability is Overlord Integrity Field. This is another ability that's really built for support players inside the game. Um, it basically enhances the heals that, that they're about to give out for the next few seconds. Um, it's funny point if you have like two of them on, on, on your starship, you could have, have this up pretty sizably for a very large, large amount of, 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 of the time. So, so yeah, um, this, this is pretty potent if you have a ton of heals um, on, your, on your starship or be able to put them on, on, on other starships. Plus your heals also will or, or, or heal of the three allied, allied starships within five five kilometers which as, as we've talked about before on this channel five kilometers is special because it's within five kilometers you're able to have abilities like a command extract fire and other of your cruiser command abilities um yeah this doesn't affect carrier pets so it's not as valuable for those but if you're a, a support player why to make sure that you're basically helping a DPS player who's not going to have any defenses on their ship whatsoever, this is this is really valuable to have on, on, on your starship. However, that ability and this one are only available off of the exchange, so it's going to cost you a pretty penny in order to get those things. Um, this next one is Structural Integrity Collapse. Um, this is really good for a lot of your EPG and Torpedo DPS builds because both a, a lot of your exotic abilities and your Torpedo abilities, um, or Torpedo damaging stuff is either physical or, or kinetic damage depending upon what the ability and what's being activated and this gives you gives it gives a debuff on enemies for a a given amount of time and it also does a little bit of extra EP, epg damage to them during during this duration too um does it does have decent uptime if you have two of them but i don't recommend getting two a lot of times you're really going to use this at all if, if you if you are going to use it and then enemies is just going to die so it's really only only on the super hard enemies in, in the game which there really aren't many anymore because of how high the dps curve has has gotten inside the game or 
Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward there enough for now. Our next ability, actually next couple of abilities, we're going to have our auxiliary power to something um, of, of, of abilities. And these are all unique in their own way. We're going to, we're going to talk about Ox to Bat last because it's, it's its own special weird thing now inside the game with certain certain duty officers. Um, first one that's really cool is Auxiliary Power to Inertial Danners, or Ox to Damp. And um, the cool thing about, about this one is um, it lasts for 15 seconds, and if you get the cooldowns down enough, you can, you can basically constantly spam this thing. What's really nice about this thing is that it gives you, even though it gives you some resistance against physical and kinetic damage, the bigger thing for us is that it gives you immunity to disables and repels. That is really powerful. It, it's a really, really strong counter to science, to our lo a lot of your science um, builds inside the game. They have a lot of repelling, disabling, pulling um, in, in, inside of the game. So this is really, really powerful for, for that aspect alone. Now with enough cooldowns, you basically have just one of these and would be spamming them constantly. However, for overall utility, um, the other two abilities are a little bit stronger, honestly. Um, it's really only against, you know, it's only if you know you're going against a science or torpedo captain, would you generally consider getting this thing. But you get a lot of life speed turning along, along with it too. Um, Ox Destructional Integrity Field. This is the ability that a lot of your really offensive, what I personally call off off tanks inside the game, will really like to have a really strong affinity towards. The reason is because it's um, it has a 10 second cooldown. I'm oh, sorry, um, 15 second cooldown. It um, the damage is instantly off of the ability lasts for 10 seconds. Um, obviously, if you have two of them, then it's down to 10 seconds. But basically. If, if you're someone who's constantly spamming this this ability as, as a tank player, two thirds of the time right off the bat with just one one of these abilities, you're going to have a sizable amount of damage resistance rating for your starship, not having to put anything on their starship or, or in in the skill tree. For a lot of your super offensive tanks inside the game, they feel that this is good enough for the healing. And so they, they're able to put a lot more of their skills into like maxing out like the, the tactical skill tree um, and to get the, the tactical ult ultimate and do other things for their starship. In my opinion, this only works for off tanks. If, 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 if you aren't, say, doing 75,000 to 100,000 damage per second plus for your starship, if, if you aren't in that range or higher, this is not going to work for you. You're going to need other things to help heal your starship. Um, obviously, a lot of your DPS people are, are going to say that obviously you should obviously be going for that high. But here, here is the reality. The reality is not everyone's going to be up there. Not everyone wants that amount of DPS. There are some of us who are that like a more drawn out battle because that's what classic Star Trek was. It was, it was a lot of strategy instead of just constantly yelling out a bunch of different um, bridge officer abilities. I mean, you actually even see that in some of the other um, um, cutscenes inside the game where it's actually a little bit slower um, than, than what we actually have inside the game. There is So that there is a little bit of that disconnect inside the game between what the cutscenes are versus what really happens inside the game, but I don't know. I'll probably cover that later when I talk about the history of Star Trek Online in January and February. But anyway, um, Ox Destruction on Territory Field is high, highly desired by a lot of your high-end um, off-tank off DPS players inside the game, and they'll, they'll use the highest rank that they possibly can for it. Now we get to Ox to Bat. Um, I'm not even listing this stuff here, like the coulons and things, because those don't really matter, frankly. It doesn't even matter. In the olden days of Star Trek Online, back when weapon power, shield power, inch power, that, that you couldn't get really high high um, power settings for all of your weapon power settings, for all, all of your power settings. This was actually pretty viable for that. Um, so you, could, you could basically pull from aux power and power the other systems. Um, it is built into the code that if aux power doesn't have power, that it'll 
and whenever you activate this ability instead, it'll pull from the other uh, the other power settings and power up auxiliary power. Because I'm doing this on the ground, it senses that I don't have auxiliary power, so therefore it, it's defaulting to, to that setting of trying to pull from the other power levels to give auxiliary some more power. Just so that you, you know as, as to what's going on here. The real reason why you use aux to bat is because of these technician duty officers. If you get three of them, they cost between 8 and 10 million on average on, on PC. If, if you're a console, it's probably going to be beyond the 15 million um, en en energy cap, so you probably can't even do this build without getting the, the en energy capping increase on, on console. But for, for PC, it's simply between 8 and 10 million. If you, and you're going to need three of them if you're going to do this type of build. You, you'll need three of these te technician duty officers, and you'll need two aux to bat abilities. Because all you're doing with this is proccing the technicians, you'll want as, you, like, you don't need the higher ranks of these. It's just the lowest ranks you could possibly get for your aux to bat um, abilities is what you're going to be wanting to use. On average, between 8 and 10 seconds on average, at least for me on my builds, when I've used this, strategy anyway um, is when I'm able to constantly use use this reduces all other um, bridge option abilities by 30 percent because you, you're able to have used up to three of these it's extremely powerful especially if you use the coal harder trade off of the um, the, the, the the winter ship from last winter uh, it is a pretty powerful and potent ship I'm not going to show off that build on, on this um, channeled simply just because I know a lot of you are really new to the game and don't have access to that ship. I'm not going to ask you to like get like all these like six or seven different like holiday ships way with a bunch of epic um, Phoenix lockbox drops that you can't even unlock for your, your entire account. That That is just not reasonable to me. That's why for a long while my builds, I will have one. <laughs> I will have one console from those old ships, the, the Lucari consoles, because there's nothing similar to it in the game anymore um, in, in most of my builds, and I'll use a lot of sea store traits, is what I typically like, like, like to use now, just so that it's easier for you all to be able to replicate and to be able to use it on multiple captains. Because let's face it, we're not all whales that can spend a bazillion dollars on, on this game. So... I, I, I'm trying to be as reasonable as possible. So yeah, um, this is a pretty expensive route to go nowadays, but it does give you a lot of spammability on in your cooldowns, and it allows you basically not to like basically just spam everything constantly. I personally like a lot more strategy when I'm playing, and so I do not like to use Ox to Bat personally because of that fact. Um, but I know a lot of people do. It's one of, if not the best way to do DPS in the game right now, it's really up, up to you. Now we get to our rest in peace bridge officer ability called Boarding Party. This was brought over from a game called Star Trek Starfleet Command. I've, I've mentioned this thing on, on the channel before. Um, in, in that really old game released in like 1999 or 2000, something really close to around there. Um, there is a mechanic when you were using your um, starship in which you could use hostile, or you 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 can use boarding parties and, ra and raiding parties on enemy ships to like weaken them, so that you can actually capture the starship. Obviously, capturing enemy starships isn't necessarily part of the mechanics anymore um, in Star Trek Online super olden days there was elements of uh, of that to an extent inside the game there is some tiny elements of that to an extent in the delta rising missions in the delta quadrant they were honestly pretty annoying to say the least um not not to mention alongside that boarding parties can be countered really heavily just by being shot down if you happen to have a starship trait which immediately transports them to an enemy starship, there's three easy, very common bridge officer abilities that can counter boarding parties pretty hard. Tactical team, engineering team, and transfer shield strength. 
Shattered Shield Strength is a science ability, which I will get to in the next uh, video for, for this series. But yeah, um, boarding Party has, has a pretty good chance to do some disables and um, on an enemy ship for Boarding Party that manages to get over there. And it also um, increases cooldowns of, um, of your other bridge officer abilities. And similar to some of the other stuff that's available through consoles, like the one from the uh, the Narendra Cruiser with History Will Remember, remember um, that particular trait, that console does a lot of the same things that Boarding Party used to be able to do. Just as an, just as an FYI for you all. Um, just the Boarding Party, because of all the... So many times this thing's gotten basically nerfed and all the different ways to counter it. And it's pretty long cooldown. You can't basically spam this thing. It's it's one of the abilities in this list I cannot recommend for you. Basically, unless you're doing a very specific build, theme build around boarding party, don't use use them. Do not use use them on your starship. I know that some of your bridge officers, whenever you're leveling up, for some reason happen to have boarding party as their default ability. Get get them retrained and put basically anything else on this list. And it'll be more effective. Just saying. All right, next one is directed energy modulation. Um, this adds extra penetration for your starship. Um, whenever you synergize this shield penetration with a lot of your hull penetration, which a lot of your tactical captains like to have off for the skill tree, it allows you to penetrate a lot of things really, really easily um, in, inside of the game. Um, this is one of the most common um, extra abilities for, um, for for your DPS captains, for energy captains inside the game to add to their starship. Um, in, ter in terms of raw cooldowns, it lasts for 30 seconds. Um, its raw cooldown is 90 seconds, but its minimum cooldown is 45. So you could have this up fairly substantially high, depending upon your cooldowns. Like you have Ox to Bat, you could, you, could, you could get it down to 45 seconds. Um, but you, you do need, need a lot of engineering bridge off your abilities in order to be able to afford to put direct, direct energy modulation on, on your starship. It, it is a pretty good ability, um, but just depends upon what you want what you want it and what you want to perform on, on your starship overall. Our next ability is Emit Unstable Warp Bubble. This is a fun ability. Um, it's very simply an anti-science ability, and um, I th I think it's pretty fun. But you have to make sure you don't have science players on on your team in space, otherwise they're going to be really mad that that they can't use their gravity wells, or that their gravity wells will go away after you use your so warp bubble. Because it prevents Tycan's Rift and Gravity Well from being used. Which are pretty powerful for a lot of your science builds. And so if you basically say, oh hey, science builds, you know I can't use Tycan's Rift or Gravity Well. Well, that sucks. <laughs> um, and yeah, it also stops fighters um, and those types of things as well as, as any platforms. And also stops um, saucer separation as well. Um... In my personal opinion, um, I, I see this more usable in PvP to basically make sure that that science um, ships basically are less useful in, in certain areas, um, or force people into different areas, or you like maybe have like a bunch of mines planted or something. Um, it also does a lot of of um, damage um, reduction in, in, in inside of the area where, where you launch this thing. Um, it is pretty nice. It's not up a super long time, um, but it is decent. Um, this is also one of those uh, bridge officer abilities that you get from from a mission. Uh, it's just that you have to make the training manuals after you get them af after you get it off the mission and, and after you've used them. If, if you want to have more bridge officers to have these these abilities, but if but if you're smart and make sure that you put these on like a bridge officer that you know you're going to be using for the rest of the time you play Star Trek Online for that particular captain. Then you're not gonna have to worry about re retraining it. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's pretty much what what this this, this is about overall. 
Next one is extend shields. You need to be careful when you're using this one. Um, basically, if you're just if you're just playing by yourself, you don't have any allies with you. Do not put extend shields on on your starship. Switch to something else. Um, it's simply because it's basically a buff to an ally with you. So that this is definitely a, a this has has affinity towards support play styles where we're the buffing an ally. To basically put it in, in rough math, you're basically giving the shield resistance equivalent of emergency power to shields to your ally. And for the equivalent shield resistance, it's basically of of the rank lower of it for emergency power to shields. Like for instance, emergency power to shields one at ensign gives you 18% shield resistance. That's the amount of shield resistance that you can give to an ally at rank one of, of extend shields one here at at lieutenant and same thing going up so therefore if you want to give an ally 30 percent shield resistance you'll have to use extend shields three at at the, at the commander seat i'm not sure it's fully worth it that commander especially if you have special seating for other things like miracle worker but and yeah. um adding shield resistance to an ally as, as a support is extremely nice especially because if your ally is constantly getting hit and stuff and getting lots of debuffs this is one of those buffs that is not going to be stripped away from an ally because um, the um, the mechanics of, of buff stripping is buffs that are sent from a starship to itself. So if it's a buff from an ally sent to you, it's not going to get stripped away. Um, it, it, it's it's one of those really weird mechanics. Um, however, keep in mind, you know, it, it's a really strong buff because of that. You have to stay within 7.5 kilometers of your ally for that 30 seconds for it to stay up. Otherwise, it will be removed. So um, um, it, it, it does, does take a little bit of a coordination to make sure that this stays on and, and it's pretty good. But um, it, it is pretty potent if, if you're, you're going to be a support. Just going to throw that out there. Our next ability is Virtual Polarity. This is another ability that, especially for... A, a beginning player inside the game, I highly recommend you using this, this ability. It's got a pretty long cooldown. Depending upon the rank, you, you get a longer duration and its and its base strength is higher. Um, but against most enemies inside the game, this basically gives you in, in, invincible shields. And your, your shields also heal for the duration. Um, yeah, um, also... Um, a couple things to note with this um the the healing that you get from energy damage hitting it can be enhanced by different consoles and skills that you have in, in your skill tree that enhances um shield healing um so keep so keep that in mind on my on my ships i typically have around like 90 percent healing even from the rank one ability which I wish that's close to what the base rank three ability is actually. Rank rank three is like 99%. But the, the couple of cons to this ability really comes down to the fact that it is not effective against non-energy weapons. So kinetic weapons, mind weapons, science abilities bypass virtual polarity entirely. So virtual really is 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 is, is does not take effect even when those things are going off. So you gotta be really careful as to why your ship is getting is, is getting hurt. If it's if it's energy stuff, then yeah, this is gonna help you a lot. If it's torpedoes and mines that are mainly killing you, then you need to start countering with something other than reverse shield polarity because this is not gonna this, this this isn't a like 20 seconds of of, of invincibility at, at rank three. No, if it's torpedo mine EPG base. It you, you you could easily still die while this is going. So, but I mean, like especially whenever you're leveling up, put this thing on on your ship. Really, really good. Um, the lowest rank you can put it at is is l l lieutenant, and and for most builds in the game, lieutenant is just fine. Next ability is Acetone Beam. Um, this this did get, get quite a bit of a nerf in its EPG ratios and things on 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 the ranking of it. Um, it's gonna be rank one or rank three that you do it this with because rank two is just a lower version of rank three and they're both they're both commander C. Um, 
um, th th this thing does have a couple of things beyond EPG though. Um, it also lowers energy damage on an enemy for 10 seconds. And it, it takes projectile weapons offline for a few seconds as well. This isn't very long though. Just gonna throw that out there. Um, there are other abilities in, inside the game that I will get to in different specializations for bridge officers that has this that has the same percentage for reduction in damage, but it but there's a, other bridge officer abilities that will affect all damage instead of just energy damage. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that the reduction is is, is bad. Um, it's, it's still pretty significant for most enemies inside the game, but there are a few enemies that are torpedo and mine banes, like the Vodwar and the Undine, that it's not going to be quite as valuable um, for for the energy damage debuff as you would expect. Um, and the fact that, that the EPG here got slashed pretty recently um, is really only this full utility is why you want to use this thing. And there are other abilities that if you have the same rank of, of a different type of ability in, in other specializations, those other specializations will just give you more bang for your buck overall. It's, it's, it's not bad, but it's not necessarily the most stellar thing that, than what it used to be inside the game. Um, believe, we believe this is the last one, and it's Eject Warp Plasma. This one's also a limited one. To put it simply, like you can use this if you want to have fun, or if you're facing a really, really tough enemy that you actually can't fight. Then you basically use Jet Warp Plasma and have them chase you and lay down mines, and then the enemies will just, then the enemy guys in missions will just, will, will fly through the plasma and get lots of damage and fly into your mines and take a lot of damage. Um, when I used to play the game, when I was, Early on, early on in Star Trek Online, when I, when I used to play the game a lot and finally got my first mod stuff for uh, when I first got my first commander and during Bridge Officer Seat. What I used to do is I would use Jet Warp Plasma right after I used um, Evasive Maneuvers. And I would basically circle in an enemy with the Jet Warp Plasma trail. So that as as they moved, it didn't matter how they moved, but as, as they moved, they would end up they would end up moving through the plasma cloud. That, that was how when I used to used to play the game for a long time that's what that's what i, I used to do as the strategy for this because i didn't see the value in um in aceton beam and my epg was always really low anyway so 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 i really liked to jet plasma and did damage and also slowed enemies so it was it would thus become easier to hit them too that 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 mechanic still exists in star trek online even from the transfer over from star trek starfleet command um it has it has a decent cooldown and stuff. Technically, if you had two Jaguar plasmas on, on your ship, you could have these going constantly. There are technically a couple of consoles that could put this on cooldown, but in my opinion, they are consoles that are not very good. Um, so they're not the consoles you really need to worry about. But yeah, this is basically a really fun ability. But also an ability to use if you have an underpowered starship trying to face off against a lot of the end game enemies inside the game and you're on a mission if if you're in a group pve um i'd highly suggest switching to something else just gonna throw that out there i mean in pvp i i, I can definitely see it, its usefulness certainly you put a lot of zipper positive clouds out and you basically make it so that there's certain areas where if you, there, there's a group of PVP guys trying to trying to gank you all, um, they can't do it through the plaza cloud. They have, they have to do a different approach. That I that, that I could I could I could see. Or if, if they're trying to chase you, you check more plasma and their impulse speed and turn rate is significantly reduced if they try to fly through that plasma cloud. Outside of those, it's not really one that I would highly rec recommend for y'all to use. But anyway, um, that's basically it for Engineering Bridge Officer Abilities today. Um, my next video in this series will be going over Science Bridge Officer Abilities. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that finished before Sunday, um, mainly because I'm also prepping 
my, the 500 subscriber special for Sunday, where I will be going over my favorite um, tanks throughout Star Trek history. So um, hopefully you all are looking forward to that. It's still going to be in a normal, normal PowerPoint format, just because that's how I would like to do it. And those of you all that watch the channel thus far really seem to enjoy that still. So anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Hopefully some of these things have been helpful for you all. And enjoy the rest of your day.